Good afternoon. Happy Fourth of July weekend. Good to see you here. And for those of uh, you who are joining us from your homes, welcome and happy Fourth of July to you as well. We're glad to have you join us. A couple of things just as a reminder uh, about how uh, we do certain things during Mass. The first is for communion, and that is when you come up to receive communion, if you would leave your mask on until after you've received the host and stepped aside. And secondly, at the end of the Mass, there will be an usher guiding you to exit those center doors over there, unless you're sitting in the handicapped section, and then you can go out the door that you came in. Today is the 14th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Our presider at this liturgy is Father Tim, and we thank Bob up there for providing us with Fourth of July music. the Father, and to the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the presence of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We've come together as the body of Christ, brothers and sisters in the Lord, to offer praise and thanksgiving to a God who loves us unconditionally. We begin this great prayer calling upon God's mercy and forgiveness of all our sins. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us all of our sins and bring us into everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who through your Son, Jesus, has raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy, for on those you have rescued from the slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives, reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Zechariah. Thus says the Lord, Rejoice heartily, O daughter Zion. Shout for joy, O daughter Jerusalem. See, your king shall come to you. A just savior is he, meek and riding on an ass, on a colt, the foal of an ass. He shall banish the chariot from Ephraim, and the horse from Jerusalem. The warrior's bow shall be banished, and he shall proclaim peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. I will I praise, praise your, your name, name forever, my King and my God. I will extol you, O oh my God and King, and I will bless your name forever and ever. Every day will I bless you, and I will praise your name forever and ever. I will, I will praise, praise your, name your name forever, forever my, my King, King and my God. God. 
The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is good to all and compassionate toward all his works. I will, I will praise, praise your name, O Lord, my, my King, King and my God. God. Let all your works give you thanks, O Lord, and let your faithful ones bless you. Let them discourse of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might. I will, I will praise your name, O forever, Lord, my King, King and my God. God. The Lord is faithful in all his works and holy in all his words. The Lord lifts up all who are falling and raises all up who are bowed down. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. A reading of the letter to St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the spirit, if only the spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. If the spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. Consequently, brothers and sisters, we are not debtors to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. The word of the Lord. My sisters and brothers in Christ, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus exclaimed, I give praise to you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for though you have hidden these things from wise and learned, you have revealed them to the little ones. Yes, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father. No one knows the Father except the Son and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart. You will find rest for yourselves, for my yoke is easy, my burden light. The Gospel of the Lord. I was reflecting on the readings for this weekend and remembering a time 
giving a parish retreat. And people were asked on the retreat to, to answer questions. What are you doing for the life of the church? Not such a profound question. What are you doing for the life of the church? And a young mother, she thought for a moment and then she raised her hand and offered her reflection. She says, I'm at home with the children. They're all under the age of five, and there's three of them. I'm trying to teach them how to be kind to one another. I pray with them at night. I read to them stories from the scriptures, stories from the Bible, and bring them to church when we can. I think I'm doing the best I can in those small ways for the life of the church. Another young man raised his hand. He was a gentleman in his 30s. And he offered his reflection saying that he works for the state. And in his job with the state, he tries to be honest, consistent, fair. And he said, those aren't things that are always held up in government, government jobs. Not always easy to be fair. Not always easy to be truthful. But I want to do that. I want to bring the gospel that I hear about on Sundays and that I profess in my baptism into my work. And I guess that's the way I contribute to the life of the church. I thought those were two really good reflections. I wasn't looking for someone to stand up and say, well, you know, I um, help lead the Bible study three times a year, or I help with the Altar and Rosary Society, or I work volunteering, giving out communion. It was wonderful to hear stories of people in their everyday life found just simple ways of trying to integrate the life of the church into their daily affairs. Because that's not easy for us. Sometimes it's hard. Jesus says to us, you know, take my yoke upon you, for my burden is easy. My yoke is easy, my burden is light. If we actually look at the Greek translation of that word yoke, in the gospel, it doesn't really mean easy. That's a translation we use in English. But it really, the word means fitting well. Walk with me. Take my yoke. It will fit you well. You know, after the last few centuries, we've probably not seen too many real yokes or have an understanding of what those are. Surely our children and grandchildren don't. But that yoke is there to help make the burden of plowing a field easier. And the very special thing about a yoke, too, is it's made individually for each animal. No two oxen are the same. Sometimes the yoke has to be adjusted in its breadth, its width. Sometimes there needs to be notches carved for a bone that may have grown out too much. So they're each personally made, but they are made for the sole purpose of easing the burden of the labor, of the work. So we are given this wonderful life of faith. And walking with Jesus, walking in a life of faith, is help to ease our burdens, that we might bring that light of Christ to others. Because Jesus tells us the burden is light. A light to all.
This is a, a weekend uh, one can't help but not reflect on our great nation of the United States and how our founding ancestors built this country on Christian principles, always trying to protect the right and the dignity of the citizen of the United States, to look out for the welfare of one another. And it is amazing that after 200 years later, we're still learning how to do that better and better, learning the value of each person's life, the value of human life at all stages from beginning to end, the protection of the dignity of all persons and their right to free speech. So we continue to grow in that understanding because we try as a nation to walk with our Christian values, to allow Jesus to walk with us, to influence us. I think like many of you, I'm uh, very patriotic. Many of us have family members who fought in world wars, fought in Vietnam War, Iraq, Afghanistan, and we're grateful for the service they gave, not only to our country, but to the world in trying to raise up the dignity of others. Those of you who attend daily mass with me know that each day I pray for those who put on uniforms, for their protection, their care, and that they might re be returned to their homes and their families in safety. We're still learning how to raise up the dignity of every human person and to protect them. And so we always remember, we pray for those on the front lines. Right now we're so cognizant in this nation and across the world of, of healthcare workers. They're probably people we didn't think about too much before and took them for granted. And right now they're on the very front lines of this coronavirus. We hear some who have been separated from their families for four months, not wanting to bring that disease home to their children and choosing to be faithful to their vocation of health care. I watched as the National Guard was called up and three of my own family members were called to service, not allowed to talk about where they were going, what they were doing, but proud of them and prayed always for their safekeeping. This is a country built on Christian values and ideals and we strive to live them each day. Do we always do our best? Sometimes we've failed, and history shows us that, but we try and learn from it. And every day, I pray for our, our leaders in government, for the inspiration, the guidance, and the wisdom of the Holy Spirit upon them. So we do have a great nation. We have a great country to be proud of. Can we grow more? Yes. Is there more we can do for the needs of others? Always. Will we continue to live the gospel? Yes. Will we make mistakes? Yes. But we know we share the yoke of that burden with Jesus. We allow Jesus to help us to be better persons, better citizens of this world, and a better nation. So I pray for all of you and your families and your revelry this weekend that you enjoy it and that it is a time of safety and that we always remember those who protect it and allow us to keep that safety and that precious gift of freedom that our ancestors have given to us. It's a freedom grounded in the freedom that comes from a relationship with Jesus Christ. Let's stand and we'll offer the prayers and the needs and the intercessions of this community gathered in faith this evening.
for the church, that we may pattern our lives after the example of Jesus, who came in humility and called to himself the childlike of heart. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the leaders and people of all nations, that they may be sowers of hope, builders of bridges and agents of dialogue and harmony, bringing peace to the ends of the earth, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us on this holiday weekend, that as we celebrate our freedom in this great country, we may also remember during our current health pandemic to follow the guidelines to keep those around us safe by wearing masks and practicing social distancing, we pray to the Lord. For our children and all who teach them, our parents and grandparents, teachers, catechists, everyone entrusted to their care, especially during this time of virtual learning, that together they may grow into becoming the persons God wants them to be, we pray to the Lord. For those who are sick, those who are weary in body, mind, or spirit, that they may find in Christ the rest they long for, and in Christ's disciples the assistance they need, especially Mike Stinn and all those listed in our bulletin and in our personal prayers, we pray to the Lord. For those of us gathered here today and those watching from home, that we may be gracious and merciful slow to anger and of great kindness to others, as Jesus was, we pray to the Lord. For all those who labored and were burdened, or for those who died suddenly, that they may find rest for themselves in God's eternal home, especially Jerry Salvatore, and all of our parishioners, family members, and friends, and those who have died from the coronavirus, we pray to the Lord. Heavenly God, in you we find the very foundation of our freedom and the gift of eternal life. As we sojourn towards the promise of the heavenly kingdom, We have burdens and needs. In your great care for us, lighten our loss and help us in our need. This we ask through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives, who reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to Almighty God. May this offering, dedicated to your name, purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven. We pray this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just. It is our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, almighty and eternal God. For justice through your beloved Son, you created the human race. So also through him, with great goodness, you formed it anew. Therefore, with all the angels and saints, we join in a hymn of glory, as together we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread and, giving thanks, broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking in the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, the Order of Bishops, the clergy, religious, and all of your holy people. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, all who have died in your mercy, Bring them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, the apostles, the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. My sisters, brothers, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days. That by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Look not upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called 
to the supper of the Lamb. Almighty God, in the care that you have for us as your daughters and your sons, you feed and nourish us through word and sacrament. We pray that the love of Christ may grow stronger within our hearts, that we may always bear witness to your saving deeds. This we pray through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives, who reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Let us go in peace.